Hello everyone and welcome back. That's right, he's uploading again. What a shocker. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new feature in Rails 7.2. I think it's been a couple months since I made one of these, uh, which covers rate limiting. If you want to just pause the video, here's the commands you need to run and do to make stuff work. Uh, but we're going to take a look at what we're actually doing and then we'll just implement it real quick. So. Rate limiting allows you to have something like this post controller right here, where if you have a cringe user who continues to refresh the page, you can have them rate limited and then optionally redirect them somewhere else. So now if they try to go to posts, as long as the timer is like within one minute, they will continue to get redirected to this page. Ideally, you would just send them somewhere where you're not using up a bunch of your network bandwidth to serve them stuff. Uh, but this works from the Rails app. It also works if you try to like curl the page from the console a bunch of times. Eventually, they will just stop getting a response, and then you don't have to worry about you know someone eating through all your traffic. Obviously, you still want to use something like Cloudflare to actually protect yourself, uh, but this is a good first step, just kind of make sure that people aren't blowing up your app for whatever reason. So how do we do this? Well, we just follow these commands. We're going to go ahead and create a new Rails app, though, because I have problems following directions sometimes. So we're just going to do it from scratch. So it's a lot easier for you to see what we're doing. We're going to start by typing Rails new video. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's CD into this project, run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. We move this over to the other monitor. Uh, and then let me go ahead and just real quick drop off my pater in RuneScape so that I can keep getting XP gains and not waste XP by making videos. Okay, uh, let me come over here and do this. Okay, so what we're going to do is start in the console. We need a app to actually rate limit. So let's go ahead and let's do that real quick. We're going to start by hitting F11 and control scroll in a bunch. We're going to do a Rails G scaffold post for a title of type string and a body of type text. Go ahead and run that. Uh, and then we're just going to give ourselves a page to redirect to. So this is going to be the home page. So whenever we uh, look at the post page too much, we're going to get put back to the home page. Go ahead and run that. Now, there is one more command you need to run to actually make this work. It's going to be Rails space dev colon cache to actually enable caching. I'm not going to do that right now so that you can see the problem I ran into when I tried to get this working. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and do a Rails S without that dev cache command so that we can see it broken. We're going to come up to app views. Uh, and then I think in here I made a shared. So let's right click folder shared. And then in here, we're going to do a new file. And I think I called this underscore flash underscore messages dot dot erb. And then in this flash messages dot dot erb, I just have a basic little flash dot each do with a key and a value. And then we have the uh, key as the alert dash for the class. And then the value is just right here. Okay, so that works. That gives us our uh, notices and our alerts. Go ahead and close out of this. That gives us our shared message. Now let's come on to the uh, pages and the home page. In the home page, what we want to do is have a link to the posts. We'll do that down here. And then we want to render our flash messages at the top. Again, we're just doing this so that you can see in like pretty simple steps how to get to this point in an application. Then you can just plug it into your own app uh, so that you don't have to sit there and try and piece together what my, my words mean when I put them on the screen. So now we have this. We can link to our post. We can go to our post uh, controller. And in our post controller, we can do the actual rate limiting. So this is where you would at the top have something like rate and you want to do a rate underscore limit. You can then say this needs to be uh, limited to five requests within a five minutes period. Uh, alternatively, it's one dot minute. So this is pluralized as you go. Uh, you can also do like 30 dot seconds if you want to, et cetera. It's the same time stuff that you're probably used to from other, other things. So I'm gonna do five within one dot minute. Again, make sure you add the S to minutes after you're done. You can then specify what needs to be rate limited. We can say, all right, only limit the create, update, and destroy action. In my case, because I want us to have something oops, have something to look at, I'm going to add the index. Uh, that way, if you're spamming refresh on the index page, you get rate limited, which is uh, obviously not great user experience. Let's say they're waiting for a new release and they keep refreshing. And you're like, yeah, actually, you don't get to see anything. That would be kind of weird behavior on your part, but whatever. So we can do this. We can come over to our app. We can refresh, and it should look largely the same. We can hit Run Pending Migrations. This is the DB Rails colon migrate that I should have run earlier. 
Uh, and then we can come over to our routes, which are in our config folder, routes.rb. And then we can just give this a pages controller home action as the root. Let's go ahead and refresh. And now we're on the home page. Let me scroll in a bit so you can actually read this. Okay, so we go over to the posts. And then we see, oh, undefined method rate limit for class post controller. Where's this coming from? Well, if we come into our, uh, our gem file, we can see that we're using a outdated version of Rails. So if you're in this position, you can just real quick do a bundle update and switch this to, uh, let's just do 7.1.2 point something, I think I said. Yeah, two, uh, 7.2.1.2 is what I'm using. Bundle update, go ahead and run this and we should be updated. Uh, obviously, you want to do this a bit more uh, particular than just throwing in the latest version and calling it a day. Uh, but now I can do a Rails S, and then we should be good to refresh the page. I think I'm using a version of Ruby that I usually only use with my, my actual website. Uh, so let's refresh. Let's wait for the console to catch up here. And now we're on the new post page. So let's go ahead and let's refresh a bunch of times. Uh, and we've clearly done it more than five times in the last minute. So why isn't this working? Well, the way that the uh, rate limiting works right here. This rate limiting is it needs to have some kind of cache. Now this could be like your, your Redis DB, uh, or you could use like your built-in mem cache. And this is where no matter what you try, you can change your config, your environments, etc. This isn't going to work until you come into your console and you do that rails dev colon cache command. So you can go ahead and do this and I'll say, uh, development mode is now being cached, right? Then we can do a rails S over here. Uh, and now that we have this done, we can refresh the page. If we start refreshing the page, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, look at that. We're getting a, uh, you can't look at this anymore error. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but you'll see here that we're not getting redirected. And that is because in our rate limit, we need to actually tell it what we're going to do. You do have the option to set uh, a couple more things, including your store here. What we're going to do though, is I think we have to redirect with a uh, redirect to the root path with an alert that says stop refreshing so much. Or you could say like rate limit reached if you want to have some modicum of, of professional uh, appearance, but I don't really care about that on my channel. So we're just going to do stop redirecting so much, you turbo nerds. Okay, so we got this. We can tab this over, hit control S, hit F11, come over here, refresh. And now you see stop refreshing so much shows up in our shared flash message alert. So now whenever we do that, we can then come over here. We can refresh the home page as much as we like to. We could of course put this rate limit inside the application controller and have it apply to everywhere. So maybe you have like a really broad one that applies everywhere of like 500 refreshes per minute or something just to stop the people from absolutely blowing up your app. Uh, but in this case, we got this, we come back over to the posts and you can see, we can look at this again. We can do a new post, test and case, click create, back to posts. And this works fine. And then if we start refreshing, we'll get sent to the homepage because we've we've refreshed too many times, right? Okay, so this works, but let's test it from the console. To test it from the console, you have a couple different options. You can either curl it or there's a command I did somewhere, which is like uh, for I in one to seven, do a curl of the limited action, which in this case would be uh, slash posts and then hit done. And then this will run and then you're good for that too. So let's take a look at this. You can see here, uh, oops, we need to actually come in here and change this to posts. Let me do that. We scroll in, change this to slash posts. Like that. Uh, is that correct? What did I do wrong? It should be slash posts like this. There we go. Okay. So now we can come up here. We can take a look at what all this did. So uh, we run this. We get a 200 okay. We get a 200 okay. This is request number two, request number three. Request number four, request number five. Oh, and then look at this. We're not getting a 200 anymore. Now we're getting a 302. So now in the console, we're getting redirected to somewhere else. Of course, you could just send this to like, I don't know, we send it to Google or something, give them your, your garbage traffic, get put on a blacklist, whatever. Uh, but this gives you some ideas here. And if you do need to take a look at how any of this works, uh, there is the rate limiting right here, which you can just take a look at if you either go into like the Rails source code uh, or you just open it up in VS Code. I think there's an extension that lets you do this. And then you can take a look at what this actually looks like. So it takes in a two, it takes in a within, a by, which is like your, uh, uh, like what you wanna filter by. So as opposed to like web page, you're like where it's coming from, you do like the IP address so that it's 
it's also filtering from IP. So like my terminal and my website will both have the same type of request uh, and then takes in the store and then does the rest of this. So if we change this to IP, which I haven't tested yet. So let's try this. Let's do a buy and we'll do request remote IP. If I come over here and I go to posts and I refresh five times, right? So now we're rate limited. If I click on posts, I'm told to stop refreshing so much. Let me try this uh, two times. Hit F11. I'm actually realizing now that the uh, WSL instance and my browser are going to have different IP addresses. So this actually isn't going to work. <laughs> but hopefully you get the idea. Hopefully this works. <laughs> I just tried this and I was like, wait a minute, aren't these technically different IPs? Uh, so yeah, anyways, uh, this is effectively all there is to it. Uh, the main thing that you're probably missing if it's not working for you is just that enable cache command for your development environment. Uh, make sure it's enabled for your prod and then make sure in your prod that you in your cable.yaml have a adapter of like Redis set and make sure that's set up correctly. In this case, we would have to change this as well. And then if you need to configure it, you can come into like environments development. If you want to change your cache store to the Redis store, you can change it here. Uh, and then in your prod, it's probably already set to something, where is it? Cache store, mem cache store. You would then change this to uh, Redis to, to use it in production. So just make sure you're like setting everything up for that. Uh, and then you should be good to go. Just remember, as is usually the case, doing something in development doesn't mean it'll work in production. So when you go to change to production, make sure that you make a note to yourself that, hey, I set this up in development to have the dev cache store. I should probably make sure that I have a production cache store. Otherwise, your rate limit's not going to work and you're going to be kind of confused on why it doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it for me. Uh, this is just another one of those things that you learn while you're, you're building your own little, little product on the, on the side. Because uh, you're sitting there like, how do I do the rate limiting? And before I covered doing it manually, but this new, uh, this new like before action that you can do is, is really cool. And uh, yeah, it's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully I'll upload like more frequently again.